Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and tonight's stories are some of my favorites, but they're also usually pretty short. But there used to be this show, I don't know if it's still on, but it was called Kids Say the Darndest Things. So in an effort to better label these stories, I've called them Kids Say the Creepiest Things, because really, that's what it's all about kids saying and doing just really creepy things that creep adults out, whether it's paranormal or not. Because these stories are pretty short, I thought I would start off by telling you one of my stories. It still creeps me out to this very day, but it was a very old story, but I'll tell you anyway. So I used to babysit, and this girl that I was babysitting was, I think, four or five at the time. She was in kindergarten. And she just graduated from college, so (laughs) it was a long time ago. Um, But I was babysitting for her, and she... I don't remember how the subject came up, but she learned that I sang opera at the time. And so, I don't know where it came from, but she came up with this thing that she wanted me to opera the ABCs to her. So literally every night, I was really just like mocking opera, (laughs) but uh, every night I would go in and she wouldn't go to sleep until I operated the ABCs. So I would go in and I would sing them and she would say, okay, good night. And I would say good night and I would leave. And I would go out in the main room and, you know, just hang out until her parents got home. Well, this one night I was leaving her room and she goes, I like you a lot better than my other babysitter. Now I knew full well that I was the only babysitter she had. And so, kind of not knowing if I wanted the answer, I said, what other babysitter? And she goes, the one that comes in after you leave. Suffice it to say, I never peeked back in there unless she called me because I really just did not want an encounter with the other babysitter. But I think about that story every single time I come across these stories. And because this is a pretty short series of stories, I thought I would just uh, throw that one out there for you as a bonus. Anyway, I'm not even going to bother with the, you know what the links are and the the Patreon and the Teespring. It's all down there. I'm not going to bother with that today. But do subscribe if you want to keep up with all of the content here. Without further ado... You know what time it is. It's time to get comfortable, grab a beverage of choice, and get ready to take another journey into the night. After my brother died, we didn't tell my children because I wasn't ready. One of my sons, three years old, pointed at his picture and said, Oh, Uncle Matt, he's my ghost friend that goes to the woods. A few weeks before this, he made me shut his door every single night because he didn't want his ghost friends to go to the woods to sleep. Super creepy but also creepily comforting. My husband's family inherited a lake home from his grandparents when they passed. His grandparents, he called them Mama and Papa, built the home, but neither died there. In an effort to keep the house, my in-laws began flipping it so that they could rent it out via Verbo. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law both claimed that they started to have weird things happen, but nobody really believed them. I always felt uncomfortable late at night walking around to go to the bathroom, but I chalked it up to it just being dark and there's this wall of windows overlooking the lake. 
At night, the lake is usually covered with mist, so it's beautiful and spooky. My mother-in-law claims that she's felt an impression on the bed. A renter has said that he saw the shadow of a man outside the sliding glass doors to the bedroom. It's on a peninsula and it's gated, so the only way in would be to drive blind to the end of the road and jump the gate or to swim up. My sister-in-law swears somebody ran their fingers through her hair in the bedroom. So basically, weird shit has happened, but not to us. The first time we took our daughter there, she was about 10 months old and really babbling at people. My husband called me in from the kitchen to show me what she was doing. She was following something with her eyes and talking to it. About a year later, we're sleeping in the guest bedroom. She's in a pack and play, which is like a portable crib. When I hear her saying, no, 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 Papa, no, no, Papa, in a scared little voice. My husband's dad also goes by Papa and looks a lot like his dad. So the whole thing was creepy. I shook my husband to go and get her, but by the time he got up, she was already laying back down. My husband is 100% a skeptic, and he laughed at me for thinking that she may have seen his grandpa. But two months ago, we went back to visit. This time, my daughter slept in one bed with me, and he slept in the other. His mom and sister had mentioned hearing things rattling and knocking around the house. We all kind of laughed at them. The last day we were there, we were drinking coffee, and he goes, I have to ask you something. Did you hear somebody knocking on our door last night? I didn't, but he was clearly shaken up by it. He said that he opened the door, thinking that it was his dad or sister, but there was nobody there. That pretty much solidified to me that my daughter had definitely been seeing things. This happened a few weeks ago. My wife was working late and I had just put our two-year-old down for bed. I left the hallway light on, told him that I loved him and left his door open just slightly. I headed into my office to finish up some work and occasionally I would glance at the baby monitor. I could tell he was just about to doze off, so I paid slightly less attention. Five minutes later, I look over and he's just staring at his door, on his side, and I can hear him talking. I'm hoping that he'll eventually go down, but he doesn't, so eventually I head to his room. I said, hey buddy, you okay? He says, daddy at door. I said, nope, daddy was in his office. He says, someone at door. I understand toddlers have immaculate imaginations, but crap. That is not what I wanted to hear. My daughter goes through bouts where she's scared of certain rooms in the house. She always has, even though we moved over a year ago. In our old house, when she was about two, we were going through our first experience with these monster fears. Nothing was working, so I decided to just start asking her about them. She would say, monster in room. I would say, oh, okay, well, what does it look like? Dead. I would say, dead? Oh my, what is it doing? She replies, it say, help me. I said, well, what does it want help with? And she says, to go to the big light way in the sky. I finally told her to go help it, but that one freaked me out. She also used to tell us in great detail about what I think was a past life, how she was getting married to a man named Jasper Cohen and how she was in her quote, marriage dress 
when a bunch of men came and stabbed her soon-to-be husband in the stomach. These things have kind of kept happening, and needless to say, they're pretty creepy. stationed on Okinawa, the most haunted World War II island, for four years. I had a friend who was a single parent. I offered to babysit her son, who was three at the time. We all lived on base, old Camp Foster, which the government has since torn down. A little bit about the base. A lot of Japanese people had family members buried on the base and would build small shrines to commemorate them. Every year, they were allowed on base to visit their family members. So basically, you have a bunch of military housing with random grave sites peppered throughout the base. I was watching her little boy when he came running out to me in the living room to tell me that there was a man in the corner of his bedroom. Obviously, at three years old and with a wild imagination, it was a little hard to grasp, but I followed him into the room anyway. He pointed directly into the corner and described this man in so much detail, it gave me chills. He wasn't frightened at all, but it scared the hell out of me. He did this a few more times. He's now 15 years old and of course has no recollection, but I will never forget it. When I still lived at my mom's place, I used to share the same bedroom with my younger sister. As a child, she used to sleepwalk almost every night. Nothing creepy, just usually walking to my mom's bedroom or looking for the bathroom and then coming back to bed with the help of my mom. This stopped when she was around 10 years old and for around the next five years, nothing happened. I've always been super sensitive for sensing energies around me. For a long time, I'd felt a deeply bad energy at my mom's home and felt like someone was with me, looking at me all the time. I just felt purely unsafe. One night, I woke up to my sister sitting on her bed across the room, staring at nothing and talking quietly with her eyes fully open. I remember low-key laughing at first, before asking what on earth she was talking about. She didn't say anything to me, but stopped mumbling, while sitting up and staring at that same spot of nothing. I remember frowning and asking who she was talking to, and she turns to me and goes, to that man standing right there. The second she said that, I turned to face the space that she'd been staring at, and I didn't see anything, but I felt an overwhelming dark presence of something in the room. I started crying and literally ran into my mom's bedroom to tell her what had happened. Almost the scariest part about this was that my mom has never believed in anything supernatural or evil. She's Christian, but she only believes in God, angels, and the devil himself, and therefore she never believed our stories. But the second I told her this one, I could see the deep worry and fear in her face. It almost seemed like she had seen or experienced something too. My sister didn't remember any of this in the morning. For around a year, nothing happened, but then it all started again. Although that time, it was even scarier. But that's a story for another day. My son used to tell me about he and his sister and how they died in a basement when they had a different mommy and daddy. He has two sisters, so I would ask him which one, and he would always say that it was a different sister, 
named Claire or Clara. It was hard to tell which one he was saying. He would go into detail about their dad locking them in the basement, how they heard gunshots, and how the fire would come and they couldn't get out. He would talk about it being so hot he couldn't breathe and really smoky, and then he would fall asleep. He was only three or four at the time, and every time he would talk about it, he was so consistent and very matter of fact. He hasn't talked about it in a few years though, and he doesn't remember anything about it when I ask him. My three-year-old, who is normally very happy-go-lucky, was extremely concerned the other day. He kept looking around the room, talking about the rhino. Who knows what a three-year-old might translate as a rhino. This went on for about 20 minutes, and he was very concerned and looking around the entire time. So we get to a point where he says, the rhino is moving. My wife asks where the rhino is, and he just says, he's coming to daddy. He, yeah, um, I'm daddy, and my ass puckered just a wee bit after that comment. Fast forward about four days, and he starts talking about the ghost. My daughter asks my son, where's the ghost? And my son says, he's biting daddy. What the actual hell is happening? My nephew, who was two and a half at the time, sister and her husband used to live in my house. One day, my nephew was looking out the window and sharing his juice with the window. His mom asked him what he was doing and he said something about sharing his juice with the man. My sister assumed he was sharing with his reflection and didn't know the word for boy, so she brushed it off. He then began to show off his dino slippers. No big deal. Next day, he's back at it, except this time he says the man had his horses and was scary. She looked out the window, nothing, and no horse-related items in the room at the time. As she's looking, my nephew runs over and begins to cry, saying the man was scary. His dad came home later and shot the bad guy away with a Nerf gun, and he never appeared again. This is really weird because both my sister and I, the only two of us who have ever slept in the front end of the house where this happened, used to see this scary looking man out of the other window wearing a cowboy hat. My sister even found a dog tag with info on it about a man. We looked up the information, though, and found nothing of use. I don't remember anything written on the tag. We live in a fairly big new neighborhood, and there were no local deaths. It was really, really odd. A few years back, I was babysitting a little girl who was around four. I'll call her Emma. So Emma was a bubbly child, very energetic and always laughing. She also happened to have an imaginary friend named George with whom she played constantly, but she never really mentioned him other than to tell me and her parents who she was playing with. One day, as she was playing with this George, she suddenly turned to me and said, George doesn't like you. I was startled and asked her why he didn't like me, but Emma only repeated what she'd said before. I asked what George looked like, and she said that he was very tall with a red face and an eye patch. I, of course, got creeped out. Fortunately, she never said anything like that again, 
but I would sometimes catch her whispering to herself as she stared at me, only to resume playing when she saw that I caught her. and waving by. He also started talking about his other parents, Papa Fisher and Mama Joe. They were murdered, Papa, then Mama, and then him. After he was shot, he was in my tummy, and here we are. He's now seven and doesn't speak much of it anymore, but he would randomly say things like, Papa liked those, or in his sleep, he would casually mention needing help on the farm. Let me start by saying that growing up, my little sister never slept in our room as a child, like ever. Normally she would sleep with my mom due to her freaking out about one thing or another. To be honest, it made me feel a little bit uncomfortable about sleeping in there by myself, which I did every night. Her constant freakouts about it, coupled with the feeling of being watched while I was in there alone, even in the middle of the day, made me feel super uneasy. That being said, there was one night that I came home from hanging out with my boyfriend at the time, and I walked into my room. And who do I see? My little sister. At the time, she was five and I was 15, and she was totally fine and in the top bunk. I was incredibly surprised that my mom got her to sleep in her own bed. She looks down from her bunk, and points to my great-grandmother's rocking chair. It was then that I noticed that it was slightly rocking back and forth. She laughed as she pointed and said, look, it's grandma. I immediately yelled for my mom to take her and the rocking chair out of my room. My great-grandma had died a few months before and my sister barely knew her. Without pictures, she wouldn't even know what she looked like. It was so creepy. I have always hated my best friend's grandma's house. My friend has lived there off and on since we were probably five. At one point, she was staying there with her oldest daughter, who would have been about three or four at the time. Her daughter would draw pictures of the man and talk about seeing him in the hallway. The creepiest, though, was one night when a few of us were sitting on the porch, one summer night. One of the girls was getting ready to leave, and my friend's daughter said, Laura, you don't have to be scared. The man is in your car right now, but he's not going to hurt you. We couldn't see anything in the car. Instead of leaving, literally all of us went inside to give the man some time to vacate the vehicle. a five-year-old boy. My son once asked me if I knew the man that died here. We were at home. I said, uh, no. He said, I do, and went on playing. A few weeks to a month later, he came up and hugged me and said, I waited a long time for you to be my mom. One time he told me that he couldn't sleep because of all the people calling his name. I don't remember the exact conversation, but it was in a questioning context, like he thought that maybe that happened to me too. I asked him if it was scary, and he said no. Scared me though. I called my sister and asked her to sage my house.
This is a really short story, but it's the creepiest thing a kid has ever said to me. My boss's kid came into my office and saw an old picture of my son. She said, oh, you have a little boy? I told her, yes, I do, but he isn't that little anymore. Before I could even finish my sentence, she said, because he's dead. I said, no, he's alive and well. He's just older now. She then looked me dead in my eyes and said, when are you gonna die? Creepiest thing I've ever encountered. When I was younger, my brother and I were babysitting my goddaughter. We were all downstairs watching movies while lazing around on the couches when she starts to laugh hysterically and starts talking to what seemed like the stairs, repeating stuff like, that's funny. When I asked her what she was laughing at, she replied with, over there, can't you see him? The man with the green teeth sitting on the stairs. My brother and I grabbed her and got right out of there. I still don't like that basement. My mom said that when I was about nine or 10 at night while I was sleeping, she would come into my room to turn my Christmas lights off. This was about late November or early December. And I apparently woke up immediately after she turned off the first set of lights and started screaming at her, what are you doing? Stop, really loudly. She turned the lights back on and I apparently went back to sleep. She asked me in the morning while I was getting ready for school if I remembered it happening and I didn't. I'm 14 now and still to this day, I don't remember that event happening. I'm sure that this startled the hell out of my mom, but it probably wasn't paranormal. Either way, she got a good scare. This one time, I was babysitting my cousin. She drew this really creepy picture of her friend Ellie. In this picture, Ellie had a braid wrapped around her neck and into her eyes, and she was pulling me into a closet. I asked her why she drew this, and she said, Ellie thinks you're mean. She told me she wants to hurt you, and she started crying. I mean, heck, I almost cried myself. Not much happened after that, but it was pretty terrifying. When my little niece was like four, we were in the car and randomly she goes, mommy, are we puppets? My sister was like, no, no, baby, we're not puppets. My niece thought about it for a moment and then said, I think we are, we just don't know it yet. Incredibly ominous, little child, thanks. When my nephew was a toddler, about two years old, he would cry at night and say that there was a man in a hat in the closet who would talk to him. He was petrified and he wouldn't even sleep in his bedroom anymore. He would only sleep in his sister's room every night. My brother lives in a home that was built by our grandfather. Our grandfather had cancer when we were teens. By the time it was found, it was really too late. 
Near the end of his life, we brought him back home and we turned the office room into a hospital room. That same room, many years later, had become my nephew's bedroom. My brother, sister-in-law, and I were all living at the house at the time, and we were all a bit startled. We didn't think it could actually be our grandfather, though. I mean, he wasn't the type of man to pop out of a closet in the dark and scare the shit out of a toddler. Whatever it was that my nephew saw, or thought he saw, has left him afraid of the dark and still prefers to sleep in the same room as his sister to this day. Thank you.